Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to this uh, webinar uh, series, Risk, Resilience, and uh, Sustainability Informed Integrated Management of Infrastructure Systems. Uh, this web webinar series is uh, cooperated, uh, organized actually by JCSS, Joint Committee on Structural Safety, uh, JC, uh, GC, this Joint Committee on the Globe Consensus, uh, Davos uh, Global Risk Forum, uh, Harbin Institute of Technology, HIT, uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and uh, Arbog University. Uh, actually, we uh, today we welcome the sixth talk uh, by Professor Dagong Lu from Harbin Institute of Technology. And, and uh, we actually, we, as you already know that we have two platforms uh, which have this uh, broadcast simultaneously. One is Zoom, another is on this Bilibili. And uh, if uh, both of platform, you can see the broadcast uh, directly. But if you want to direct talk or communicate with Professor Lu, you need to log in to Zoom actually. And uh, also we have this official web page on this uh, JCSS website. You can find that and uh, you can uh, watch all the videos we already have in the past. And today uh, after the Professor Liu's uh, presentation, you will also find that uh, on this official website of JCSS. Uh, Professor Liu now uh, will present the uh, have the talk on the topic robustness and the resilience of infrastructure systems subject to earthquakes. Now I uh, will take one to two minutes to introduce uh, Professor Liu uh, briefly. As you, I, th I think most of us or all of us already know Professor Liu very well. Uh, Professor Liu currently works as a full professor at the School of uh, Civil Engineering of Harbin Institute of, of uh, Institute of Technology. Uh, he is members of many international organizations such as JCSS, uh, JCGC, uh, IBMS, EMS, IALCCE, uh, IACM, etc. Professor Liu actually has published three monographs and over 300 peer-reviewed journal papers and conference papers. He has uh, big research groups at the uh, HIT. It called, its name is uh, RIA at HIT, Reliability and the Risk Engineering. And the main research areas of RIA group of Professor Liu are uh, reliability, robustness, and the resilience of engineering structures, vulnerability risk, and the resilience of critical infrastructures, performance-based design of structures, life cycle assessment, design, and amendment of civil infrastructures, soft computing and uh, multi-hazard soft design in civil engineering in the uncertainties. And the last is uh, computational stochastic mechanics and the probabilistic engineering mechanics. Now actually uh, it's time for Professor Liu. He is nice that uh, already have the recorded videos, but uh, Professor Liu also here. So after you watch the videos he prepared for us, and then you can talk directly with him. Yeah, thank you all of you. Today, I will talk about robustness and the resilience of infrastructure systems subject to earthquakes. As we know, uh, during the past decades, the buildings and the infrastructures uh, in China have developed very fast. For example, in many mega cities such as Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, many landmark high rise buildings have been built especially uh, some famous stadiums have been built for Olympic uh, summer and winter games in Beijing. Uh, with the rapid development of Chinese economy and urbanization, many infrastructure systems have been built and are being built, such as super large span bridges, the highways, the high speed railways, Sea ports and air ports, wharves and waterways, tunnels and underground infrastructures, and also many nuclear power plants. The policy of a one belt, one road, and the foundation of a 
Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank also promote the international cooperation of infrastructure construction. On the other hand, uh, the seismic environment of infrastructure in China are very severe. From the national uh, seismic hazard maps of China, we can see that much portion of Chinese lands are affected by earthquakes. In 1976, the Tangshan earthquake caused about uh, 400,000 fatalities. In 2008, the Wenchuan earthquake has killed about 90,000 people. Uh, many infrastructure systems have been destroyed by the main shock, aftershocks, and the following multi hazards. For example, for this, uh, in this picture, you can see. And uh, uh, since uh, the Wenchuan earthquake, many uh, devastating earthquakes often happened in China, such as uh, the Yushu earthquake in Qinghai province, the Lushan earthquake uh, in Sichuan uh, province, you see, and uh, the Jiujai, Jiujai Go earthquake also in Sichuan uh, province. And in uh, last month, still in Sichuan province, uh, another serious earthquake in Luding occurred. And there have been many failures of infrastructures damaged by the earthquakes and the triggered land slides. The figure on uh, the left shows the kernel density of earthquake occurring in China in the past decade, in which the magnitude is larger than six. And the red image demonstrates the global significant earthquakes from 2150 BC to the present. So it is evident that China is highly under threat of seismic hazards, no matter in history, all the past the decade. So due to the severe damage and collapse of infrastructure systems and the structures, as well, as well as huge human and society cost caused by earthquakes, the research on seismic robustness and the resilience of infrastructure systems is really needed, significant and urgent. So this is the outline of the presentation. Uh, I will firstly uh, introduce the modeling and the quantification of robustness and the resilience. And then I will introduce their applications within my research group to different infrastructure systems, including uh, building structures, highway infrastructure, urban underground infrastructure, offshore wind farm infrastructure, and the transportation infrastructure. So next, I will introduce the modeling and the quantification of robustness and the resilience. Uh, basically, uh, there are many discussions on the similarities and the difference between the two concepts of robustness and the resilience. In general, the scope of the resilience is more larger than the robustness. So, uh, in 2003, uh, Bruni with other uh, co-authors integrate the robustness and the other three uh, concepts into the four basic uh, properties of uh, resilience. During the service life, the infrastructure systems are imposed to natural and man-made hazards. Uh, this may cause severe damage and collapse of structures and the functionality losses. Therefore, uh, the system needs a period to recovery. So the robustness and the resilience should take the viewpoints of life cycle perform performance of infrastructure. So for both uh, resilience and for the robustness. To model the robustness, we should consider the disproportionate 
failure consequence uh, triggered by uh, the local damage due to the accidental events. And uh, basically, there are many ways to quantify the robustness. From the deterministic views, uh, many indices which describe redundancy in systems can be used to define the index of robustness, such as uh, the reserve strength ratio, the damaged strength ratio, uh, the residue influence factor, and the strength redundancy factor. And to consider the randomness and the uncertainties in laws and the structures, the concept of structural reliability can be utilized to quantify robustness. Uh, some probabilistic indices to measure structural redundancy have been uh, proposed based on the relation between the damage probability of the intact structures and the system failure probability of the damaged structures. Uh, the above quantification methods of robustness haven't considered the consequence of the failures. And uh, you know, uh, the risk-based consequence uh, quantification proposed by the GCSS can be very useful in this regard. In this framework proposed by the GCSS, the modeling of uh, system failures is divided into two phases. The initial phase is a disturbance event causes a failure of a, a constant news. And then in the propagation phase, uh, the demands of the constituents of the system are redistributed until both uh, internal and external demands are in equilibrium with the capacity of the system or until the system totally fails. Um, the, the failure consequence can be uh, divided into two kinds, the direct consequence uh, uh, and the, the indirect consequence. The direct consequence are most often associated with the individual constituent failure. And the, the indirect consequence are associated with the loss of the system functionality and the services uh, caused by the individual uh, failures as well as the combinations of the constituents and failures. So accordingly, the robustness index can be quantified based on the ratio of the direct and the total consequence of the failures. Uh, due to the randomness uh, existed in the robustness, uh, the ratio of direct consequence over the total consequence of failures uh, should be random also. However, the above ratio is defined through the uh, expected values of the two terms individually. So uh, in 2015, uh, Professor Faber proposed a more general and consistent scenario-based approach to the quantification of robustness. Uh, to model resilience, uh, the lost uh, functionality and the residue functionality, uh, the time to full recovery, as well as uh, the path uh, for the restoration should be considered properly. And uh, similar to uh, robustness, uh, there are also many ways to quantify resilience. So to consider the randomness in the residue uh, functionality, uh, the time, uh, the idle time interval, the recovery duration, and the target functionality, uh, Dirko and the Frank uh, proposed a probabilistic index of resilience for uh, different uh, seismic damage states of bridges. And uh, you know, uh, these four parameters uh, basically are qualitative in nature. So they also have fuzzy properties due to the iceberg's experience. So, uh, Jelena and Rick, uh, one of my former PhD students, proposed a fuzzy resilience index to consider uh, the four resilience parameters using uh, triangular fuzzy numbers. 
so these are four uh, resilience parameters are all modeled by the fuzzy numbers. And also uh, for the fuzzy recovery uh, model, uh, based on the above uh, considerations, we also establish uh, the fuzzy recovery models for a well-prepared system, for the average prepared and the, the poor prepared or unprepared systems. And, uh, and then uh, based on the fuzzy integral, we proposed a fuzzy resilience index. Uh, it can be a fuzzy number uh, which is suitable uh, for representing resilience since each of the value is related to the three possible uh, scenarios, uh, optimistic, most possible, and the pessimistic. And also uh, the alpha concept can be applied to measure uh, different levels of resilience in order uh, to analyze the possible case scenarios and the, the possible recovery paths. So uh, this fuzzy method is a, a very, very flexible. Well, uh, if we look at the life cycle performance of an infrastructure system, uh, there are more than one uh, disturbance events actually during the whole service life of the infrastructure. So it is worth noting that when we try to study the performance of infrastructure systems over a long time, uh, their ability of recovery is not static, okay? So we could imagine that if the system does not fail for a long time, we can continu continuously uh, strengthen its recovery ability by investing in infrastructure. So. Uh, based on this concept, Professor Faber proposed a new resilience assessment framework uh, based on the GSS framework. And uh, we have worked together to continuously improve it over the past few years. And in this framework, we model the changes in system uh, resilience ca uh, capability and also refers to the system reserve Okay, reserve here over time. And the re, uh, system reserve is generated by accumulating a uh, fixed uh, percentage of the benefits. And then we, we, we could use the limit state function to represent the system resilience uh, performance. And you see uh, R is the capacity of the system at time T and S is the demand of the system at time T. So in, in this regard, we can uh, model the resilience failure, okay? So next, uh, we, uh, I would like to uh, introduce our research on seismic robustness and the resilience of the building structures. Uh, formally, we uh, utilize the deterministic based uh, indices to evaluate the robustness of building structures. Uh, the process is, uh, firstly, uh, we make the uh, pushover analysis for the intact structure. And then we make the pushover analysis again for the damaged structures. And finally, we use the, the different uh, deterministic indices to assess uh, the robustness of the building structures. And we also use the, the reliability-based index to evaluate robustness. And uh, the process is, uh, so first, uh, we make the global reliability analysis uh, based on the loading, uh, the system loading capacity of the structures. And then uh, we make the progressive uh, collapse resistance evaluation by random uh, push down analysis approach. And then finally, we compute the reliability index of the index and the damaged structures by the higher order uh, moment methods. We uh, further use the, the risk-based index to uh, quantify the seismic robustness of structures. And the earthquake uh, disturbance are assumed to follow 
uh, Poisson homogeneous uh, process, and the intensity of the earthquake is assumed to be a log normal distribution. And uh, the simple uh, parallel uh, frame structure is modeled uh, by a Danish system uh, with up to uh, 20 uh, constituents. And uh, each constituent is assumed to uh, behave uh, brittle as failure. And uh, the direct uh, consequence uh, calculated as the replacement cost associated with the constituent failures uh, due to the earthquake load. And the indirect consequence are associated with the replacement due to the failure caused by the internal load redistribution. Okay. And uh, you see, uh, these figures show uh, how the index of uh, robustness change uh, with the variation of the number of the constituents and uh, also the system uh, safety factor. And it is found that uh, raising uh, the number of uh, constituents and uh, also the system safety factor has a remarkable influence on robustness index when the probability of a system uh, failure is high. And the, uh, in this research, uh, we used the random pushdown analysis to conduct the uncertainty, uncertainty and uh, sensitivity analysis and to investigate the influence and the significance of the uncertain parameters on structures to resist progressive collapse. Uh, we have used the, the, the benefit-based index uh, to make the resilience assessment of the building structures. Still, uh, we take the same uh, Danish system as case study. And the figure uh, show how the functionality of the structure uh, changes after one uh, time disturbance of an earthquake. And uh, we consider the three stages of recovery. So you see a uh, preparation, fast uh, uh, recovery, and the final recovery uh, stage. And we consider two levels of uh, prepared needs levels, low and high. And uh, from the figures we found that uh, the economic reserve uh, decisions have significant effects on the probabilities of resilience failure. And especially when the number of uh, constituents is small and uh, the probability of uh, resilience failure and the uh, high preparedness is lower than that under uh, low preparedness. So although it is not so significant influence, uh, it still is a substantial effect on the consequence. Uh, except the resilience uh, uh, assessment, uh, my research group also uh, developed some uh, new types of uh, resilient and rec uh, recoverable uh, structures. For example, uh, we uh, invented a rocking, uh, you see, a rocking truss. Uh, so it is added on uh, the steel moment frame. And uh, the rocking truss, it, it is uh, used to realize the self-centering function of the, uh, the seismic resilient structure. And uh, this uh, structure uh, has a very uh, uh, better performance for the uh, seismic resilience. And in this work, uh, a novel construction of the uh, column uh, bottom foot, bottom joint is proposed for the steel moment frame and the, the rocking truss. Uh, which is used uh, to uh, realize the self-centering function. Uh, and also uh, this uh, this new system has um, better energy dis uh, dissipation capacity to avoid the failure of the column bottom joint. Uh, in this work, a rocking uh, cold form uh, steel frame is uh, proposed by releasing uh, the, the bending uh, constraints between the columns and the, under the foundation. 
and which can enhance the energy dissipating capacity and improve uh, the re resilience and the ductility of the conventional cold formed steel structures. <clears throat> And for the BRB uh, frames, uh, we designed some uh, ductile uh, rotational connections uh, to link the beams with the flow uh, slabs and how uh, we verify uh, the feasibility by experimental test and the numerical uh, simulations. Okay. Okay, next I will introduce uh, the research of my group on the seismic uh, risk and the resilience of highway infrastructure. Uh, we uh, have extended the peers uh, PBE framework uh, to the uh, seismic resilience assessment. And uh, we used the, the seismic fragility analysis uh, from uh, both PSDA and the PSCA and to convolve with the PSHA curves and then to derive the seismic risk curves. And then uh, we use the probabilistic index, okay, index to assess the resilience. And uh, for the recovery uh, function, uh, we used the, the survey data of uh, Wenchuan earthquake losses, and then we establish a exponential model, a recovery model, okay, and also compared uh, with the simplified uh, linear model, a uh, linear recovery model. And then uh, for the continuous uh, girder bridges in Shandong province, we make the prediction of the seismic resilience of the bridges using uh, the two uh, recovery models. And then uh, for the continuous uh, girder bridges in the city of Kunming city, we used the, the former uh, proposed the fuzzy resilience uh, index uh, to make the assessment of the seismic resilience. We, empo uh, we employed fuzzy sets for the quantification of uh, earthquake magnitude and uh, source to uh, site dis uh, distance. And also we used the fuzzy uh, inference rules for the ground motion attenuation uh, relationships. And we consider the four uh, fuzzy resilience parameters and the fuzzy uh, the limit states for the bridge components. And then we use the fuzzy index to determine the resilience uh, metrics for the bridges. Uh, the proposed uh, fuzzy uh, resilience assessment method for bridges uh, also uh, uh, are extended to uh, make resilience assessment for the bridge network in Kunming City. And the bridge uh, network has uh, 48 uh, bridges, including 28 uh, multi-span bridges and 20 uh, single-span bridges. And we use the genetic algorithms uh, to generate the optimal uh, restoration sequence of the bridge uh, network. Okay, uh, this uh, this project uh, for this uh, steel concrete composite bridge project, uh, one of my former PhD students, uh, Liu Yang, uh, was involved in the collaborative research and the supervision of me and the Professor Palasi. And uh, Dr. Liu Yang uh, got the seismic for agility curves of the typical bridge uh, components uh, using the experimental damage data. And then uh, he used both uh, the uh, experimental and the analytical fragility analysis to get the hybrid fragility curves. And uh, he uh, assumed uh, that the bridge functionality is in direct proportion to the vertical uh, capacity of the bridge. Uh, the vertical capacity of the specimen uh, during the test is analyzed, and uh, the value of the EDP is uh, was observed. And then he made the D uh, aggregation analysis for the functionality recovery function for different PGA levels. And uh, finally, 
uh, got the you see uh, functionality recovery velocity and also the robustness of the robust uh, of the bridge. And then uh, finally, uh, uh, he got the resilience curves uh, with the PGA. Okay, next I will introduce uh, uh, our research on multi hazard uh, risk of uh, urban underground infrastructure. Well, uh, this is a, a national uh, key research and uh, development plan of China, uh, which has uh, five working package, and I am a co-PI of WPY. And this pro project was just completed last month. Uh, this uh, project considered uh, some independent sudden hazards, including earthquakes, uh, fires, explosions, and also uh, some slow diseases, including uh, the deformation, uh, the leakage, and uh, the cracking of the urban underground infra infrastructure. Uh, in addition, the project also considered some uh, cascading uh, hazards, such as earthquake-induced uh, liquefaction, and the earthquake-induced deformation, and as we can induce the fares. Uh, based on the Bayesian network, we conduct a risk uh, modeling for the two independent hazards of uh, earthquakes and the fares, and also three uh, disaster chains of earthquake induced liquefaction, uh, tunnel deformation, and uh, fares. And uh, the topological structure uh, between the nodes. Uh, represents the interdependence uh, among the, the different variables. And then uh, by uh, conducting historical data, uh, consulting expert opinions, and also uh, some uh, numerical simulations, uh, we established the conditional uh, probability tables for the multiple hazards. And uh, at the same time, we use a series of uh, methods, uh, such as uh, the disaster scenario construction, control variable analysis, and the sensitivity analysis to conduct the mat uh, multiple hazards risk assessment in the urban underground infrastructure. And we take the Shanghai subway as a case study. And uh, we, also build a multi-hazard risk assessment and emergency decision-making system for uh, the urban underground infrastructure uh, based on the flask. And the server of the system uh, use the knowledge graphs and the Bayesian network techno uh, technology to conduct the multiple uh, hazard intelligent uh, question answering the risk assessment the emergency decision making on the urban underground uh, infrastructure. Okay, uh, during the past three years, uh, we have conducted some research on risk and the resilience of uh, offshore wind farms, uh, collaborate with Professor Fabo uh, from Arbo uh, University, uh, Denmark, uh, Jian Jun Qin from Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and uh, Jiang Shengzhu from Shanghai Electric European uh, Innovation Center. And we applied the risk-based robustness assessment framework to the offshore wind farm uh, electrical system design. Um, four kinds of design uh, decisions, uh, including the layout of the wind farms, uh, the electrical system topology, the transmission types, and the, the component types are considered. And the probabilistic model of the wind resources and the wave effects are accounted uh, in the robustness assessment. And the direct consequence include uh, the, the labor cost, the transportation cost, material cost, and the equipment cost uh, during the preparation of the field components. 
and the indirect consequence uh, refer to the economic losses uh, due to the energy losses within the recovery uh, period. And then uh, the robustness uh, index uh, conditional on, the, on a given failure scenario is, is priced as the ratio of a direct loss to the total loss. And then uh, we use the expected values uh, of the robustness index within the whole life cycle uh, and then to support the de design decisions. And we found that uh, it is not advisable to choose the design decisions with only one transmission cable, uh, which may uh, reduce the robustness of the system and cause more indirect losses. Moreover, it is observed that uh, only when the robustness index is large enough, uh, then the system can uh, obtain a high uh, net percent value, okay? And uh, this means that uh, the robustness of uh, the system is a necessary condition uh, that needs to be, uh, to be considered when designing. <clears throat> Uh, for the offshore wind farms, uh, we have also uh, investigated the resilience modeling and assessment. And uh, we proposed a, a general probabilistic framework modeling and uh, analysis uh, for offshore wind farms. And uh, illustrates uh, how to apply this framework uh, using the uh, commonly applied modeling techniques and the tools um, in the wind energy industry. And for more details uh, about this, uh, this work, uh, you can find the details from uh, the former B uh, video of uh, Jian Jun's lecture uh, from the GCSS uh, website, okay. And then, uh, then uh, I will uh, introduce some of uh, ongoing works related to uh, the resilience assessment and the risk control of a transportation uh, infrastructure. <clears throat> um, this project uh, just the start uh, this year, uh, I am the PI of this project, uh, which has four uh, working package and uh, six partners. And the infrastructure uh, includes uh, the roadway, uh, the railway, the wharfs, the waterway, and the civil airports. And the multi hazard uh, includes the uh, earthquakes, the geo hazards, the extreme climate, the extreme hydraulic conditions, and the unfavorable uh, uh, weather. And for the earthquake and its uh, secondary disaster scenario uh, construction, the most critical thing is to uh, how to construct a spatial uh, field of uh, the seismic motions, ground motions, uh, which can consider uh, the should consider the, the both the source model, the propagation model, and also the site model, and the spatially uh, distributed ground motion intensity measures uh, obtained by the ground motion simulation, and then uh, considering the site conditions, uh, the regional hazard analysis is performed to predict the seismic-induced landslides and the liquefaction. And uh, we obtained the distribution maps of the uh, internal fraction angle and the cohesion uh, from the lithological data combined with the engineering standards. And then we obtained the slope map uh, of the study area from the DM data and then are the static safety factor and the critical acceleration uh, can be determined. And then by uh, combining the critical acceleration and the ground motion intensity distributions, uh, the pneumatic dis uh, displacements of the study area can be obtained according to the empirical uh, regression equation. And then uh, by uh, inputting uh, the seismic information and uh, uh, combining uh, with the site information, 
the uh, geographic uh, liquefaction uh, potential index can be obtained to evaluate ground failure, uh, the facility damage, and uh, the economic losses. Uh, we create a classification list, very big list, for bridges, tunnels, railways, pavements, for the highway uh, infrastructure, uh, with reference to some uh, relevant standards and uh, literatures. Okay, and then uh, we uh, establish the simplified fragility functions uh, from both the literature survey and also some numerical uh, analysis, and also from the former uh, experimental data. And then uh, we got the parameters for the class classified components uh, in the established list of the critical units. Okay. And then uh, uh, we establish. Uh, okay. We uh, build a, a framework for uh, the frame uh, fragility assessment for the transportation uh, infrastructure network. Uh, which is uh, divided into uh, uh, five steps. Uh, so first, uh, build the top uh, topology model of the network, and then uh, construct the scenario uh, for earthquakes and the secondary and disaster uh, geological hazards, and then the Martin hazard fragility assessment of the key units, and then uh, the functional uh, indicators and the limited state division for the network. And finally, we use the Bayesian network uh, to model the network fragility. And uh, we take the road network in Aba autonomous uh, prefecture in Sichuan province as a case study. And the based on the bridge, uh, tunnel, and also the road grid data in the study area, uh, uh, Undirected uh, network model of the study area has been developed, so, like just like this one. And uh, <clears throat> the importance of the uh, network north is evaluated based on the calculation results of uh, uh, the degree centrality and the betweenness centrality, closeness centrality, eigenvector centrality matrix, and then. Uh, the calculation results are all uh, visualized in JS. And uh, for uh, <clears throat> the maximum connectivity uh, size and uh, the network uh, efficiency of the network are uh, all calculated by sequentially deleting the nodes in the network. And uh, assume that the random attacks and uh, the intentional attacks in uh, descending order of a degree on the network respectively, and then uh, we calculate the maximum connectivity size and the network efficiency of the network after the attack. And based on uh, the calculation results, the robustness of the network can be evaluated. And then uh, for or from the four dimensions of uh, the four dimensions of uh, the physical uh, functional uh, economic and uh, governmental. Okay, for these uh, four dimensional uh, resilience, we based on the questionnaire survey to select the corresponding uh, evaluation indicators systems and the, the ways, and and then we establish a three level uh, hierarchy of the resilience evaluation indicator system for the transportation infrastructure. And uh, now uh, this research is still uh, uh, unworking. Okay. Okay. Finally, uh, the conclusions and uh, the outlook. Uh, the construction initiative of a resilient city has been uh, written in the 15th uh, five-year plan for national economic and the social development and the region uh, 2035 of China. Uh, so it is very urgent and necessary to build robust and resilient infrastructures against the earthquakes and also other natural and man-made hazards. Uh, the quantification uh, indices uh, utilized for robustness, robustness 
and the resilience assessment need to be adjusted according uh, to different decision uh, making scenarios and the problems. Okay, and uh, it is also uh, important to, to consider the whole life cycle performance of infrastructure systems for robustness and the resilience assessment. And uh, uh, both research and uh, practice on robustness and the resilience evaluation and the decision making of infrastructure systems are cross uh, disciplinary. So, which require much knowledge of a diff uh, different disciplines. Okay. And then it is uh, necessary and uh, urgent to establish uh, the framework for the optimal integrity management decision making uh, for infrastructure systems uh, based on the balance among risk, resilience, and the sustainability. And finally, uh, collaboration is critical and very useful for the research on robustness, resilience, and the sustainability of the infrastructure systems. And uh, we need an uh, open platform for sharing data. So it, this is very, very important. Okay, uh, that's all of my uh, presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention and the questions. Yeah, thanks, um, Professor Lee, for this impressive uh, talk. Now it's time for questions. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Chen. Uh, hello, Professor. Hi. Uh, hi, hi. Uh, uh, this is Xiaoyi Zheng from China University of Mining and Technology. Uh, firstly, thanks a lot for your wonderful presentation. Uh, and I have a question about uh, uh, what presented in the last slide of the third part. Uh, the, the, uh, I will share. I will share uh, okay. the presentation. Just a moment. Uh, The last slide of the third part. You mean the the last slide? Yes, the last slide of the third part. Uh, for this part. Uh, the third part. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, the the, the last part. slide. Third, third, third part. Third part. Let me see. Uh, the third part is about uh, underground. Uh, no, and uh, it's about uh, the uh, resilience of the bridges or infrastructure. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah. The third part. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, highway yeah. infrastructure. Yes. Highway infrastructure. Okay. So, what's your problem? Uh, the uh, in the light uh, in the last slide of this third part, uh, I have a question about uh, why the resilience. Uh, uh, increase as the PGA goal. Okay, just a moment. Just a moment. I, I, I know. I know. I know your question. Maybe here. Yes, I, I found the, the here. resilience. Yeah. The, you mean uh, this? This one? Uh, maybe it's, not. Uh, yes, yes. 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 Hmm? Six to three. Yeah. Uh, why the resilience index uh, will increase as PGA goals? You mean uh, which case? You mean uh, which color line for, for this figure? Yes, uh, the, the resilience index uh, increases as the PGA goes uh, when the PGA uh, larger than 0 0.5. Oh, I, I see. Uh, yes. Let me see this, this figure. So with the increase of the PGA. Yes, so the, yes. Yeah, the resilience index is increasing. Yeah, yeah. Why? Let me see. I... Uh, well, uh, so uh, th th this figure is, is not the same as the the triangle, you know, the, the former triangle, uh, resilience triangle, not the same, okay? 
So, uh, but 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 your question is right. Why is the increase with the PGA level? Well, I, I will check. I will check the the dissertation, and and okay, then and then uh, we can. Uh, yeah, I we think can. Uh, I guess that uh, uh, you may consider the occurrence of earthquake. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe. Uh, for example, for for the larger uh, earthquake, uh, the the probability of the occurrence. No, it's it's decreasing. So maybe, yes. the, yeah, maybe that's the one reason. Maybe so, but I, I will check. I will check the reason. Okay, thanks a lot, Professor. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, other questions? There's one people uh, uh, raise the hands. Yeah, can you please. Talk directly? <laughs> yeah, can you talk directly. Yeah, please. Yeah, the the who uh, the name now disappear, but uh, uh, you 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 should open the uh, the audio. Uh, yeah, you you should uh, give the permission to Islam, yeah. Islam. So how do Islam. Islam is close. Can you mute it? Uh, can you stop the mute? Okay. Any other questions about? I cannot hear the voice. Why? Yeah, maybe his mistake. He didn't. Uh, maybe, yeah. I, I think you can put your question in the dialog box. Yeah. It's also yeah. Um, uh, Professor, you maybe I have one question. Is uh, yeah, sure. interesting. Yeah. Many things interesting. This, in your last part, you talk about this uh, transportation network. And mm -hmm. my question, my interest is, uh, or my question is, how you consider this uh, road uh, uh, resilience or reliability? Because the road is different uh, uh, with this, like a bridge or like uh, wind turbines. Because road is uh, like pipe, so it's a very long. It's uh, distributed yeah. system. It's not. A, one uh, like when uh, one uh, individual infrastructure is different. So my interest is how you consider this uh, road. Uh, yeah, very resilience. Yeah, yeah, well, very good question. So in, in our terminology, you see, uh, generally we 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 say that the bridge is a node uh, structure, uh, while the the road the, the roadway is a, a land. Uh, a land element, you see. So yeah, for, for the network, you see the, the land should be an edge, you know, yes. And the, the bridge may be on the edge. Uh, so how to uh, model the edge uh, from the topology of the it's network? Uh, so it is a very um, uh, important, very important to, uh, to, to consider the, the road uh, property by the edge. You see, we can delay. For example, if the uh, a road is damaged, then it will be delay, deleted uh, in the uh, network. So this is from uh, the network performance, and this is uh, the one aspect. Another aspect is that uh, we can um, model the roadway uh, by fragility analysis by fragility curves. So general, we use the PGD uh, to use the performance uh, ground deformation to model to model the the fragility of the roadways. You see, so now we we'll be just the, on the uh, working for 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 this area. So for for the road, and also you know you know that the road system also very complex. It's composed of the Road surface, the embankment, and uh, many other uh, elements. So we should integrate all these information into into one fragility uh, model. So it is also also very complex. So by uh, combining all these information, then we can model the road properties. Okay. Oh yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. So any other questions about this uh, talk?
on this talk. No question. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. <laughs> if, if, yeah. if you don't have any question, you can uh, contact me by uh, other ways, by WeChat, yeah. by other ways, and anything is okay. Yeah. Yes, so uh, if you don't, so you can watch the videos if you want. You can watch the videos from. Uh, you can know, uh, from. Uh, you can find the web uh, the link of the videos just after this talk. And uh, if any other question, you can contact Professor Liu directly. And also, uh, I will put uh, the the PDF of, of the presentation on my uh, WeChat. Yeah. Yeah, Professor, you have uh, his own this group of we, uh, Open. group account. It's yeah. Oh, yeah. A group account of this, uh, uh, and then you can find there. Yeah. Also. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Professor Lin. Yeah, you're Again. welcome. Yes. Thanks. Thank you all. And uh, thanks all of you, uh, both online, both on the uh, Zoom and on the Bilibili. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. That's all. That's all. Yeah. Okay, we see you next time. <laughs> so uh, next uh, presentation is by whom? By Fang Dong, Dong Ping Fang? No, I think uh, Professor Li and uh, Yung Bo Pen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we see you next time. Yeah, see you next time, yeah. Okay, see you. See you.